All right, so moving on, we've got another member question. That's what Ju- I'm doing when you like Justin. What the hell is he doing over there? What's he <laughs> Justin doing? from our Lake Norman location. How do you guys tackle the days where you both you and Devin are running on empty but need to be a team? Wow, that's a good question. Uh, you, I think, Justin, there's a pre-consumption that there's such thing as empty. I oh, personally... God. I personally never feel that way. I don't feel empty ever. Um, so I don't ever feel. I do. Justin. I do not. Yeah, no, you can have, you can have that feeling. That's, that's valid. But, you know, I'm not going to say that there is when there isn't. So this is my experience of life is that I'm so intentional about like, like doing all these things from working out hard to drinking, you know, Suja Uber Greens every day to taking Shackley vitamins and creatine and collagen and, uh, you know, um, may, having the best workouts I can with caffeine and getting all my protein in and eating clean foods and take, you know, just all the things that you have to do. It's a lot of stuff in order. I was listening to a Joe Rogan podcast where he was talking to somebody about that. He's like, he takes like a half a cup of like pills every day. And it's like, yeah, to be healthy and to have energy, it takes a, an, an intentional approach. Um, I meditate a lot, which gives me a lot of energy from like a actual energetic, like frequency connection place. I used to a long time ago get drained because I didn't have that. I didn't have that spiritual energy flowing through my body. And so I just tend to stay like three quarters of the way full to all the way full. And if I get like three quarters, I then create activity that gets me in a place where um, I'm not. And I think, and then I'll let you go, but I think that the main thing for me, the reason why that is and why we're different is because the stress that I took on, you know, moving around, you know, different homes and different states. And when I was a kid and like, you know, just having that chaotic environment, that kind of unpredictable upbringing, that was so stressful all the time. So my ability to, in my, in my mid thirties to um, process stress is probably like, if I had to quantify it, like in the 1% of the 1% of the 1% of, of people, I don't necessarily feel stress, which to me is like, the main culprit of draining you of energy when you're constantly stressed out about the environment around you. I just couldn't live a happy life pretty much my whole life up until 18 when I left my house. If I, if I let the external environment predicate my internal world. All right. So I would say, um, I'm an introvert. And so I get like mentally exhausted when there's just a lot that I have to do. And so I have no problem at this point in life tapping Devin in and saying, Hey, I need you to take this meeting and this work thing. And like, I need a little bit of a mental break. I don't do it often, but there's times and I have no shame in that because I think, I mean, I don't mean this to discredit fathers or, or men, but there's a mental load that I think women and mothers carry that is just very invisible and on top of work and just things that, maybe if I'm out of my comfort zone, like I do need to recalibrate. And, um, and I think he has a mental load that I don't, I don't relate to, right? Like as a father and as the provider of, you know, things in our family. So I tap him in when he needs, you know, time to himself or extra sleep. And then he taps me in when I can't do the people thing for like a while. And I just think that it's, it's communication. Um, I personally recognize that, I, but you don't feel like you ever are on E, so I don't want to speak for you. No, you can just keep tapping me in because I, I'm an uh, extroverted extrovert. Yeah, he I is. I like to talk lo- a lot. People energize him. People yeah. train me. I just <laughs> and I don't be mean that people. in a negative way. Like, I love people yeah. too, but it's a different, it's just different. Everyone's wired differently mm-hmm. and everyone has, you know, different tanks that they're trying to keep full. But anyways. Yeah. I mean, I've got a suggestion. Yeah. Just the earlier you can get the kids making meals, doing the laundry, We're trying there, um, sweeping <laughs> yes, the floors, yes, um, age that's two, that's a fact. honestly, yeah. if you just start that early, you can pick up some of that load. You got other people to tap in. Yeah, that's very true. I have three more people that there I can tap into. I'm, capping, I'm tapping Cameron to pick up the dog poop. Oh, she is starting now and she's not happy about it, but she didn't have a choice. Wait till you have a driver in the family and then you start tapping into that. Mm-hmm. That's, that's life changing. Like run to the store for me. That's yeah. life changing. Yeah. But I can identify with the, I, I think that you're an extroverted extrovert. Yeah. You're an introvert. I'm an extroverted introvert, I think. Yeah. So I, my social batter, battery will run low, but I love people I lo- and I feed off of that, but only to a certain extent where I feel like my tank gets low and I need, I need yeah. some recovery from that. Yeah. So I think it's just a different 
everybody's so different. Our makeups are different. I think our threshold is very, very different. Yeah. Um, and I think that you have to just take a look in the mirror sometimes and say, like, what do I need to be to be the best version of myself? Mm -hmm. And sometimes that is some time. Yeah. It, know, for me, it's just sometimes like a little like one night where I just don't have to think or yeah. make decisions or yeah. uh, sometimes it is escaping the kids for a little bit and mm -hmm. getting some quiet time because there's just been a lot around me. And I don't do that often because I don't want that to carry over into how I'm a mom and I want them to see that. But we're all human. And Which we, is really easy it. to do. It is. It's, it's, it's easy to get impatient with yes. your kids because of work. And that's probably like my biggest fear. So I'm trying to do more and more to say, hey, I'm feeling this way right now. I need help here. Whether that's Devin or whether that's people I work with and just asking for help more. So. And Justin also asked in part of his question, uh, what do you do when you need to be a team? And I think that's another part of this question that is necess isn't necessarily directly correlated with uh, whether you have energy or not, or whether you're drained, because there's plenty of times where we both have energy and we still need to be a team. Actually, more often when we're both on fire and we both got a ton of energy, that's especially me. I'm very <laughs> self-aware. I can do tornadoes and create whiplash. And this is why Morgan is the CEO of this company, uh, because she is so good at making things methodical and chronological and integrating them and making it in order and not chaotic. If this she's order, I'm chaos. And that's the yin and yang. And, you know, I think the need to be a team stems all the way back to when we we're first starting Burn Boot Camp. And we have this initial like mis misrepresentation of each other's roles. Like sometimes she's the professional, she's the CEO, sometimes she's the mom, sometimes she's the wife, sometimes she's the friend, sometimes she's the daughter, sometimes she's the sister. And we didn't necessarily know at the time who, what hat each other was wearing, right? Like I'm the visionary, I'm a, also a father, I'm also a writer. And there's a very different mentality when I'm writing. I like to not, I like to everything to be very, very quiet and I don't want anyone talking to me. And I especially don't want you looking over my shoulder at what I'm writing. That drives me I'm nuts. I'm seeing a little chuckle over there from Morgan. <laughs> but okay, so then, you know, that at first was like, I hey. don't know how many arguments that's like that. that I've done that and it's just a trick. I just shut so my computer. I'm I have like, learned, can I help you? I've learned not to read his emails until he's done. Well, it's almost like someone's inside of your head, like <laughs> infiltrating your thoughts before you're ready just, to share them with the world and like pulling strings. And so we had to come up with this game. And this game is like, what hat are you wearing? And so the first question we would ask each other is, Hey, what hat are you wearing? He's like, I'm, I was classic for going into Morgan's office as she's like trying to do her spreadsheets. Oh, here we <laughs> go. <laughs> oh, organization, That's numbers, not how da, I da, am, da, KPIs. No, I'm making fun of you because you're sitting right here and I love you. Um, it's endearing. I hope you guys know that. Bryce loves but a spreadsheet it, too. Big spreadsheet yeah. guy. Just yeah. So yeah. You know. No, but like yeah. the, the last thing that you guys want is for me to come in with 37,000 new ideas. All of them except for one are totally garbage, but the one is great and I'm really excited <laughs> about it, but you can't even hear it because you're so mad at me for interrupting your personal time where you're trying to like get stuff done and like trying to, you know, pss, mm. like, like arm the troops with their next like five moves. And I'm in here just dropping vision bombs on you and I remember Morgan looking up at me one time and just like closing your computer and just looking at me head sideways like with such confusion and disappointment from my lack of awareness about what she's doing like yes can I help you like that and uh, and so ever since those moments we had said what hat are you wearing Devin, I'm wearing the CEO hat. Devin, I'm wearing the wife hat. Hey, in, uh, sometimes now it's like, hey, can you talk about this right now? It, rather than, it used to be directly, what hat are you wearing? And we'd want to know that. Now it's, we know each other much, much better. So it's like, hey, can you talk about, are you in the mood to talk about this tonight? Are you in the a mood to discuss business? I got a couple ideas. Can I share those with you? And just getting some permission to do those things. That's how you're a team. Because I can't talk to Morgan uh, about something that, you know, maybe I want to do with my friends this summer on boys trip if she's in the middle of a s s response to the stressful email that she got. Her her mindset is not ready for me to discuss something super fun and jolly, right? And like I'm excited about when she's like frustrated and mad and not mad and frustrated, but like, you know, just in a state of mind where you're trying to focus and you're trying to help people solve their problems because that's mm -hmm. what you do. I mean, we got to get that trip planned. So if you got to talk about it, you force it in to the conversation. I have conversation, nothing to do with so. the planning of okay. the boys' trip. What hat so. are you wearing? I, um... 
I am not I have a question about these hats. So I can obviously see this playing out really well in your relationship. You've got CEO, you've got Mm -hmm. visionary. How does this play out in like a marriage where you're not wearing two hats like that, but Mm -hmm. there are still times where you need to work together as a team? Mm Mm-hmm. That's a good question. I think you can just go back to getting permission. That's the undertone of any way that you could communicate. It's like get permission to have a conversation about the thing that you want to have a conversation about. And it's not, try not to be tricky and psychologically like, you know, do psychological acrobatics. You can just say, hey, I really want to talk to you about the family vacation. Um, When would be the best time to do that? Or, hey, I really want to talk to you about this new idea I have for this, you know, um, website I want to start. When's the best time to do that? Yeah. And let them let them tell you. I like that. Yeah. Have, yeah. have you ever experienced the tornado during a camp, like mid camp? Devin's just like, hey, I got this great idea for an exercise. What if this? What if you parkour off of the railing right here, hang from the rafters, one arm curling a dumbbell? As have you ever experienced the? I actually tornado? saw him doing that. Oh, you did. <laughs> um, okay. A couple of weeks ago. Parkour isn't that where you jump off walls and stuff in buildings? Yeah. yeah. I yeah. think we've all experienced tornado, Devin. Yeah. At well, one point or I another. I mean, you have to. It just is what it, it it's is. It's a life it experience. It's why, it's why the brand is where it is. Yeah. And we got people around us to, to tame the beast. Yeah, let's be real. If it was just me on my own, we would have been like, like just in a giant circle, really enthusiastically. <laughs> like, it would just be like around the woods, just lost in the woods. <laughs> Woo! We're going so to we'd the be sunset. having a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. What's. <laughs> And you would have had a lot of people following you, too. Yeah. That's all I'm yeah, saying. For sure. <laughs> all oh, right. man, guys, my bad. Great we ended question. up right back in the same place we started. <laughs> oh, no. Who's going to try it again? Let's go. 